Hello. So we've already covered charging at home using a three pin plug and a commando connector. And we've also looked at public charging, but by far the quickest way to charge your Tesla is to use one of the Tesla superchargers. This for me was one of the many reasons I didn't really look any further than Tesla when I was considering an electric car. And um, they've got over 500 scattered across the country. So chances are whatever long journey you're doing, you won't have to go too far out of your way to find one. Just before we start, if you're finding this sort of video helpful, then please do drop a like on it. And if you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, then please also hit the subscribe button. So superchargers, how do you find them? How do you use them? And how much do they cost? Let's go and have a look. Okay, so the easiest way to find a supercharger is using the in-car navigation screen. If you've seen my touchscreen tutorial video, you'll know that this lightning button at the bottom left displays all the nearby chargers. You can zoom in and out as normal, and this works exactly the same way whether or not you've already got your main route planned in. On the right hand side, you can filter by charger speed, uh, but I've just got the three lightnings selected, so I'm only seeing superchargers here. Clicking on the charge point will bring up information about it, including availability, cost, and the amenities at the services. And you can just click the arrow at the bottom to set that as your destination. One important thing to note is that you should set the charger as your destination as soon as you know you're going to be going there. The reason for this is that, as you can see by the message on the screen there, the battery will start to precondition when it knows you're going to be arriving at a charger to make sure that it can take the fastest level of charge possible. Right, as we're on our way, let's take a look at a little diagram. Okay, so this is a standard Tesla charger like the one I'm going to use today. I think you'll agree I've uh, absolutely nailed the drawing there. Now there are two cables to choose from. The bottom one is a Type 2 cable. This is compatible with all Teslas, but you will get a slower speed from this. The upper cable is a CCS, which will give you your supercharger speeds. That's compatible with all Model 3s and all Model S's and X's that are using an adapter. Now at the bottom of each supercharger, you'll see a little number and a letter. That signifies that these superchargers are found in pairs and each pair shares a power source. The superchargers I'm going to be using today are 125 kilowatts. So that means if I park up on a free pair, I'll have available to me all of that power. However, if I was to pull up and start using the charger directly next to this car, that car would already have the priority and be getting the faster charge and I would get a slower rate until they leave. So as a general rule of thumb, if there are free pairs, use one of those rather than parking right next to someone else. The V2 superchargers that are currently most commonly found in the UK are between 125 kilowatts and 150 kilowatts. However, they've just started rolling out V3 chargers. Uh, these are only in a few locations at the moment, but these are 250 kilowatts and they don't come in pairs. So each one has its own power source. So you won't have to worry about parking next to another car anymore. And one final thing to note before we leave this lovely graphic, obviously the parking bays you reverse into and you're gonna to wanna to reverse right up to that black and white little bumper. Get your wheels right onto that because the cables themselves aren't that long. So if you don't go all the way to the back, it's likely you're gonna probably have to get back in and reverse further. Okay, so once you have reversed in, you just pull out the cable from the charging station. You can use the button on it to open up your charge port and then plug it in and the light, once it starts charging, as usual, will go, will go green. And you can see here, I'm parked right up to that black and white bumper and there really is very little slack in the cable. Um, so it shows how close you do need to be. Okay, so what about charging speed? You can see here that at the start I'm getting around 100 kilowatts, so that's 400 miles an hour. And it's saying it's going to take about 20 minutes to get up to my 80% that I've got set. So it's just about enough time to pop into the services, use the facilities, browse the overpriced snacks and head back to the car. The charging speed you'll get will vary based on a number of factors. Um, so first of all, the state of charge of your car. So the lower your percentage is, the quicker charge you're going to be able to get as it gets up towards the 80 90 percent it's really going to take a long time and in fact it takes nearly as long to go from 80 percent to 100 percent than it does to go from 10 percent to 80 percent and that's one of the reasons why tesla advise only going up to 80 percent unless you really need to it's often quicker to go up to 80 percent and then drive to the next charge point 
rather than wait around and go to 100% for the extra that you'd get. You'll also get a slower rate if the battery hasn't been preconditioned or if it's just a cold day in general. It will take longer to charge up the battery in that scenario. And of course, if it's busy and you're sharing power with someone else, obviously that will lower your charge rate. While you're away from the car, you can use the app to change the overall percentage that you're charging up to, as well as check on the speed and the progress of the charge. You can see here that already this has dropped down now to 90 kilowatts, now that we're up to 50 odd percent. Now, if you're visiting a supercharger for the first time and you're not sure what to expect, a resource that I've found helpful is the Tesla Owners Group. For each of the superchargers, they have all the information relating to them, including usually videos showing exactly how you access it. And for this one in particular, how to get to the southbound side of the services where the chargers are located when you are heading northbound without going up to the next junction of the M1 and, and turning back. They also have reviews and comments, which can be helpful, especially if it's one that's a bit difficult to find. Now, when the charging is close to being complete, you'll get a little notification up here saying that it is almost complete, and please check the app. It's also giving you a warning that idle fees may start accruing. The idle fees are there to make sure that people aren't just staying in the spots when they finish charging. So after five minutes, after your charge is complete, that's when you'll start being liable for idle fees. If the charging bays are at least 50% full, then the idle fees are 35p per minute. If it's 100% full, this doubles to 70p a minute. So do make sure that you're back to your car within five minutes and you're moving it away. So by the end of my charging, there are actually already three other cars parked up charging. And just as I finished, this other Model 3 pulled in. So I just said to him, I'm leaving so you can get in here so that he didn't have to share or go right next to one of the other people charging. So because of that, I made a quick dash out of the car to disconnect. So I didn't get the video of how to disconnect, but basically you press the button in, pull the charger out of your car, and then just put it back into the charging station. Payment will be linked to your Tesla account. So as soon as you finish, that amount will be debited from whichever card you have linked. You can also log on to your Tesla account. And in history, you can see all of your previous fill ups. Supercharging costs between 24p and 26p per kilowatt hour, but you will get 1,000 free supercharger miles if when you're buying your car, you go through a referral link. I forgot to do this, and as you can see, I've been paying since day one. I think I probably would have just about started paying now had I had 1,000 free miles, but I forgot. If you're feeling generous, my referral link is in the description. And by using that, we would both get 1,000 free supercharger miles. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything. If you've got any comments or questions, please put them down below and I will get back to all of them. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.